going? Good morning, my fellow trucketeers. How the devil is everybody? So, we are literally just about to start our day. I mean, it's 4.36 now, so I've been in for 36 minutes. I've been sorting all my stuff out in my truck, getting everything all ready. Because I've just come back from my week off in Wales, which is lovely. So now, like I said, it was 4.36, and we are heading up to Telford today. So we got a whole bunch of stuff to deliver there. And then, uh, then I've got to head down to Avonmouth, pick some fertiliser up, which I think is going to Blanford. So I think that's today's plan anyway. That'd be pretty much most of it, if not all of today. And then I think I've got something to collect and go to Gatwick for tomorrow. So we'll see on that one. <laughs> not entirely sure yet. And then I think either later this week or starting next week is when we do our little run up to Christmas doing the M&S work. So yeah. Fun times. Yeah. As fun as it can be. Um, unfortunately, yesterday, being the 4th of December, because today is the 5th, Monday the 5th today, uh, yesterday, the 4th of December, my fridge freezer decided to uh, die about 5 o'clock last night, just as I was preparing dinner. So that was fun. Um, fun fact, the uh, um, can't remember what I was going to say now. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's it. Fun fact, the uh, so I instantly went onto Curry's to go see if there was any available to buy. Yep, yeah, there's, there's fridge freezers available to buy. Yep, yeah, there's a slot available for Thursday the 15th for a new one. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Get as far as going to check out and then it's like, your address is uneligible for delivery. I'm like, ah, why? Why, why, why can Curry's who delivered my previous fridge freezer, we got an American style fridge freezer, so freezer on one side, fridge on the other. Why have they been able to deliver that once before but now they won't deliver another one to me? Yeah. And then, so I thought, sod down then, went on to Argos, and yep, they've got fridge freezers available, yep. No delivery slots until the 30th of December. Great, thanks. So, yeah. I'd be us a bit screwed. <laughs> um, Elaine's uncle, he's going to pop over, he's going to Electrician, he's going to come over and have a look ski, see if he can figure out what the issue is. It literally opened up the fridge door and then it tripped the fuse. So, yeah, check the fuses in the plug, check the fuses in the uh, switch because it's on a, a remote switch. Um, yeah, nothing, no, they're all good, they're all fine. There's literally just something in the fridge, so it's probably going to be something to do with the light or the door because the doors have, on the, the strip around the doors, they're heated, so it doesn't stick or frost up. So uh, it's probably something to do with them, because my mum had a similar issue, where over time with the doors being opened, it's chewed through the wire. So that's probably what the issue is. So yeah, that's fun. Got to deal with that. Anyway, it's dark, so there's not much point showing you too much of this. So we're going to head along the A35 air up through Axminster, out onto the... M5 eventually, up the 358 I think it is, I can't remember. The road go goes from Ilminster to um, Taunton, that's the one. And then up the M5, yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll crack on and do that. I will see you a bit later when I am near Telford, which will probably be about half past eight. So yeah, see you later. Right, here we are up in Telford. Uh, we're right near the customer, we're like half a mile away, but we've got a bit of traffic right in front of us. It's literally an next roundabout up, it's like a weird kidney sort of shaped roundabout thing. That's roughly where they are, I think, so... Yeah. <laughs> the segment could be a bit longer than I expect it to be, but that's fine. Yeah. Anyway, I was a naughty boy on Saturday. Um, <laughs> so we had our holiday, came back on a Friday, whatever. I had a CPC on the Saturday, so I had to get up early and whatever. So got up half six, drove in to the yard for seven with a CPC to start a quarter past or half past or whatever it was. Anyway, on the way in, my car started, almost got a vibration on the steering somewhere. Uh, so as I came in to sort of 
Chidduck where the yard is, there's a um, speed camera either side of Chidduck. So I'm coming down the hill and I'm sort of trying to listen out where this vibration is. So I was, I was watching where I was going and all that. But I was also trying to figure out where this vibration was coming from. Anyway, next thing I know, the speed camera's like here. And I'm like looking down. I'm like, ah, I'm going a bit too quick. Uh, so I've hit the brakes. As I've hit the brakes, or as I'm on the brakes, the camera's flashed at me. And then flashed again. Now, I know my speed is slightly off. All cars are. Cars will generally be off somewhere for about two to five mile an hour generally so if you're driving along with a sat nav in your car like a reasonable one like this it will tell you exactly how fast you're going and my speedo is probably a good four mile an hour off so when my speedo says i'm doing 40 i'm probably actually only doing 36 37 so i'm hoping i managed to knock it off enough before the second flash <laughs> so yeah never mind it's one of them things isn't it Trying to sort of figure out what's going on with my car and that, so a bit distracted from that, and I didn't realise I was uh, coming a little bit quicker down the hill than I, than I thought. But many human, these things happen. Yeah, done well. It's been ten years since I've had a speed awareness course, <laughs> which means it's also been twelve years since I've gained any points. So we'll we'll see what comes back. If anything comes back within two weeks or not, we'll soon. So oh, I'll. Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> might have three points on my license. I might have another driver awareness course, so we'll see. I'm hoping that it's only a very low percentage that they may either throw it out or um, uh, just put me on a course. We'll figure it out when we get there. But yeah, like I said, these things happen. I'm not going to argue it. There's no point. I'll just take it on the chin. Yeah. Never mind. Anyway, I don't know what was actually wrong with the car. The front passenger side tyre was a bit low, but that shouldn't have caused the vibration like that. Not unless it was pretty much flat, which it wasn't. It still had pressure in it. Enough to hold it up anyway. It's only a light car. And it requires 26 PSI in the tyres anyway. And it was, what, down to 15? So that wouldn't have caused too much issue. You know, I've had, had a tyre down to 10 before, and that didn't cause any vibrations. But never mind. So I'm thinking... Because when I got the got back in the car after my week off, the front brake caliper was a little bit seized. I drove up and down the road and it seemed to loosen off. So I'm thinking it might have been that. So uh, I'll just have to keep an eye on it. It was okay this morning, perfectly fine. But I think I might have to replace the brake caliper as well. So I've got new brake pads, I've got brake lines. I'm going to wait until I get some new discs. And I've also got... Um, what's that says entrance? We'll figure out where I'm going. I'm not exactly sure what this place is. I don't think that's the one I want. Yeah, so once I get all of these bits together, I'm going to start putting some videos out of the car. There's no point me uh, doing a video of every tiny little thing. If I'm going to do a break, some I'll do it more than one go. There's no point replacing pads if I have to replace discs and have to replace um, brake lines and everything. I might as well do it all in one go. All right, go on, cars. Go on, van. I'll let you go. Yeah, so that happened. <laughs> anyway, we're here now. The segment was actually shorter than I thought it was going to be, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to get these. There's only about six pallets I've got, so we'll go get these off. Figure out where I've got to go, I guess. I'll see you in a bit. All drivers must report to security. Drivers, please do not block access a barrier. Okay. Right, eh? <laughs> That's that delivery done. Yeah, all good. Uh, super secretive in there. Um, yes, they, they do things for the military. Obviously, I, I was just delivering stuff for some building work they got going on. But they, they, they build military things in there, so I can't really show anything in there. I had to like, put my phone away and my storage box or whatever and all that malarkey. But then when I drove, because they, they thought it was delivery for their stores, which it wasn't, it was for... A building site on there so i had to actually get my phone out anyway and <laughs> call a contact uh so they, they told me where to go so then i put my phone back away after that yeah that was fun yeah pretty cool stuff in there but i can't really tell you because I, I had to go use the toilet so i had to get escorted through the building i saw that they were they were what what they kind of do in there so that was that was interesting um i don't need this lane i need that lane oopsie all right no one was there that van was already in that lane so all good 
Yeah. So super super secret squirrel in that can't say nothing. <sighs> Don't want to get myself in trouble. Anyway, that's us empty now. We got two hours down to Avon Mouth to go collect some fertilizer. I've got to try and get some fuel on the way down there. I'm pretty sure Strentrum is um, key fuels, but I could be wrong. It has been known. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that really, I guess. So we're going to head and down the way of mouth. Go get the next collection on. Hopefully get that off today as well. I should get it off today because it's fertiliser, so I'll be going to farm, so they'll be happy to take it off whenever. Yeah, that's what I normally find anyway. Well, I don't know, unless like last time where it was... Uh, yeah, we're about an hour away from the yard, so we'll, we'll unload you tomorrow. <laughs> that one worked out well because I stayed on the farm for the night, so that was nice. That would have been pretty cool to film that one, but I wasn't filming that day. I didn't have my cameras on me because I had already filmed. Right, Ava Mouth. Here we are, just come off the M5. Uh, heading to Ava Mouth. Yes, 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 yes. Go get some fertilizer. Yes, fun times. Been in this place a few times now to collect. That's not too bad, actually. I've, I've not been held up there too long. It could be very, very windy there, though, so because it's right on the docks of Avermouth, so it could be a bit of a bit of a breezy one to load up, but we'll get it done. We'll get it done. I think it's usually, usually well, it depends on the types of bags, but I think they're usually 600 kilo bags, and only there's like 40 of them on, so you need quite a few straps to get, get it all strapped in properly. Which is a bit of a pain. Now I'm taking this back to the yard, so I'm potentially going home tonight because by the time I get back to the yard, I'm going to be on probably just over nine hours driving, which would be annoying. So, yeah, <laughs> there, there's that. So, yeah. Shouldn't be too bad. It'll probably take me an hour to get loaded and strapped up, so I'll probably leave here. It's what, one o'clock now? Yeah. So, I'll probably leave here, what? Realistically, half two, quarter past half past two, something like that. Two hours back to the other half four, so we're gonna be on nearly 13 hours today, which shouldn't be too bad. And I assume I'm just going back and then dropping this off in the yard because I think someone else is gonna be delivering it, and I'm gonna be good at doing something else tomorrow. But we'll figure that one out when we get there. Center now. Just gonna wanna, yeah, take up all the space I need <laughs> every time. All right, let's go in and get to this place. I reckon I've been here a few times before because it is like any docks a bit of a maze to sort of find your way around. I'll probably have to stop and talk to the the police officer in the guardhouse. That's what usually happens. Go on a bit more, there we go. I know where I'm going anyway. <laughs> He's busy attending to the other trucks because you've got to have a gate pass to get out.
luckily this bit's all open now. They did have works going on down and you used to have to loop around. It's the first couple of times I came here, but now it's open, it's just straight through, easy. <laughs> what we like anyway. We like it when things are nice and easy. Like I say it definitely helps to know where you're going. Feels quite breezy out there today so this could be fun with the old curtains. <laughs> Gonna have a bit of a fight on our hands I think. It's amazing here really because it's that open. It's it doesn't appear breezy or it doesn't feel that breezy but don't half blow, it's crazy. Can't to me trailer be trying to flap away. <laughs> End up taking off. go in there, go straight on the way bridge and then talk to someone on the intercom and then uh, he'll call one of the forklift guys, come over and sort me out. So, so narrow. There we go. Ooh. All right, I'm going to talk to mate boy. I will see you in a bit. And we are currently 1,600 and one, no, 16,200 kilos. There we go. We are loaded. I did think about filming some unloading, but it's so sort of quick <laughs> I ain't got time to sort of sit and think and film so that's why I like doing flatbed work because a lot of the time with the flatbed stuff I've got a bit of time to film I ain't got my grandma curtains and posts but because they can load like four bags at a time it's because it's like three bags across the bed so you do two one side and one the other side but they do them in two at a time so or four at a time so uh, yeah it gets loaded pretty sharpish so yeah <laughs> I ain't got time to scratch me butt, let alone uh, film anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that didn't happen. So, never mind. Just putting stuff on a trailer and off a trailer is no, not, not much more different than you've seen with various other things. Bags pretty much come off the same way. Forks go through the holes on the bags and then they get chucked on or off. Yeah. So, I went the way bridge and the way out. We are 43 8. 60 or 80, something like that. So yeah, we're, we're, we're um, pretty up there. <laughs> pretty much touching full weight. So yeah, we're all good. I didn't pack myself a big lunchbox this week. <clears throat> Mind you, going home tonight, so it'll still be as heavy tonight as it is going to be tomorrow. So I won't be eating any of my food I bought with me. Anyway, 
we got about two hours back to the yard so I'm gonna shoot off I've got my gate pass to get out as well might get told off for just driving straight in I don't know got told by the last lady I can go straight in if I know where I'm going but how true that is I don't know anyway back down to Chiddock <laughs> I'll see you a bit later it'll probably be dark then as well I don't know might be alright I might just beat the darkness yes I'll see you in a couple of hours I guess we're just under a couple of hours all right here we are at, well we're coming through Morecambe Lake now we're nearly at um, Chiddock so sort of climbing up the hills here <laughs> yeah we're fully weighted so we're definitely feeling it there's a truck right behind me I think he's getting a bit impatient uh, probably not but it's like hanging off me uh, back of me trailer <laughs> I can't go any faster, buddy. I'm fully weighted. You should know what that's like. Fine, man. <laughs> nah, that's alright. Um, yeah, we, we, we not, not had too bad a run, actually. It's been quite straightforward. Um, we have literally got, just gone over nine hours driving. We're at 9.03 at the moment. So we're going to be back in the yard in three minutes. Which is going to put us at 9.06 or 9.07. By the time I parts up, probably about nine hours and ten minutes or something like that so I don't know if I'm going home or whether I'm connected to another trailer and then sort of heading out towards Dorchester and stopping out there um, if I can go home then I will but we'll see we'll see we shall see it all depends what he wants me to do if he wants me to get up the road tonight a little bit then I will it saves me wasting so much of a nine I'll only be able to get the other side of Dorchester anyway with what I've got so it's just a uh, it's just how it is <laughs> If I ain't got time to travel no more, I ain't got time. It's currently just ticked over 4 o'clock as well, so we're pretty much bang on 12 hours at the moment. By the time I've parked up and done my paperwork and everything, it's going to be about four and a half, which is fine by me. This guy is really hanging off my back. Back off a bit, buddy. I ain't speeding for you because I'm fully weighted. I mean, I don't want to say anything, but he has a container on the back. <laughs> Box jockeys. <sighs> yeah. Ooh. Back off. There we go. Use that engine brake so we don't cook our brakes down there. A lot of the time you can tell when people use their engine brakes or not because when, they, when they're going up the hill on the other side and you drive past them you smell their brakes whether they're stinking or not. Usually their brakes are stinking and they haven't used their engine brake as they should do all the thought. I think it's alright until you need to use the old escape lane. Whoa. I, you know, get off the road maybe. <laughs> But and I suppose there's a lot of engine brake and that sort of torque. It's not necessarily torque in your test or anything, it's more torque from the company that takes you on as your first driver, I guess. Depends how, how well they are at teaching you to when or where you should be using your engine brake. James Ken Kemble can continue on his way. Right, see what the boss man wants. Hello! Hey. Right? Hey, yeah, park her up down there. Park up down there, short trailer, pick up the short trailer. Yeah. Load it to the Gatwick. Yeah. Tomorrow morning. What time do you want? If you want, we've got the road up to you. Oh, I'll pop home tonight. Bye bye, And then, uh, what time do you want me to, or do I need to be there? Five. Get in for five, yeah? Straight out there. I'll do me then. I'll do that. Aye. Right. Good Are stuff. Oh, he's taking this one, is he? Right out. Yeah. Alright, there we go. Back in the yard. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello, good morning again. 
We're on to the next day. Today is Tuesday, the 6th of December. So, went home last night, which was lovely. I could have gone further up the road. I would have probably only got as far as Dorchester, which is what? 35, 40 minutes away. Before I ran out of time, I would have, I would have gotten a bypass the other side of it and stopped somewhere there. Um, so, the, the fact I wouldn't have gained much from going up the road a little bit last night. Well, I would have been an hour further ahead than I am now. I would have just started a bit later. I could have started at the same time with the mad. But, yeah. So I thought, so that, no, all right, have a night at home. Managed to get a bit of Christmas shopping done. We finally did a bit, which was nice. We bought a bit on a holiday. Nice to do. Well, I owe you lot have already been through Christmas. I'm sure you're fed up with that. But yeah, we've only got some done, so. Anywho, I've got the little urban trailer. Not, not the flatbed, I've got the curtain cider urban. It's an old Tesco's curtain cider. Um, you know, sort of urban trailer. 10 metres long, I think it is, something like that. Rear steer axle. Ugh, can't too bad. Nice little thing to pull, actually. Tail lift on it, so I've got a tail lift job to do later. So we are heading to a uh, little hotel near Gatwick we got a load of furniture on for them. So we're gonna crack on up that way. Go get these off. It's three hours and 20 minutes away, so we've got plenty of time to get there. So yeah, we shall soldier on. Now, I've, I've been showed where this place is, and I've been showed how to get in there, and it's got two 90 degree blind sides to get in there. So, uh, well, one's 90 degrees, one's just over 90 degrees, so this could be a very interesting reverse, so uh, I'll make sure I'll have the cameras on for that one. Yeah. All right, I will see you at some point later on. Maybe. <laughs> Currently five o'clock, by the way, or 20 past five then. Lovely, a bit chilly. It's five degrees, it's not the coldest it could be. Certainly feeling the cold this morning, though. <sighs> Here we are on the M23, heading south from the M25. So we're almost at Junction 9, I believe. Yeah, Gatwick. Oh, I'm a bit tired. Ugh. I've got about a mile and three quarters left here on the M23. I've got three cars in front of me that want to sit at 50 mile an hour on a motorway for some strange reason. But because I've only got a mile to go, it's not putting me trying to overtake them because I'll probably end up getting stuck out in the second lane, which would be no good. Actually, I can come off in the second lane, so it wouldn't actually hurt that much. But why, why, why do car drivers want to sit at 50 mile an hour on a motorway? It, it's 70. Get up to speed. I shouldn't even be anywhere near a car, let alone catch up with them <laughs> and have them slow me down. Terrible. Terrible. Anyway, we're nearly there. Uh, it's taken about three hours and 14 minutes driving. I did stop for a half hour break at um, Fleet as well because I needed to have a bit of a rest. I was uh, trying to get a bit tired. I'm still tired now. I'm going to be tired all day. I think over Sunday night and Monday night, I think I've had a total of about seven hours sleep. So I've not slept very well just two days for some reason. But never mind. It's what it is. I can manage. Just got to stop a couple more times today when I feel a bit tired. And... <sighs> Excuse me. Have a walk around in the cold to wake me up. I know me limits. I, I, don't, I don't. I try and stop before I get to the stage where I'm feeling like really drowsy or anything like that. Because the uh, last thing I want to do is cause an accident. But I feel safe enough to drive, which is the main thing. Once I get here, I'll be getting out and giving the guys a hand to unload this stuff. So uh, that'll wake me up a bit. I presume I'm going to be go running back empty because I have the urban trailer. Um, the chance of having a load small enough to fit on this to run back is going to be quite slim, but we'll see. You never know. You might you might have found a load that will fit on it. So obviously this can only hold 20 pallets compared to a standard trailer that's so 26. But then can't exactly load this up with timber unless it's only a small load of timber and bricks and stuff like that. Obviously this thing can't carry the weight of standard trailer he can either. Right, looks like we're nearly here. Ready 
ready for this um, double 90 degree blindside in a car park. Yeah. Another meaning for having a break is it's now 10 past 9 as I arrive here, so I'm hoping anyone that stayed in this hotel overnight would have hopefully buggered off and gone to work or whatever. So uh, hopefully there'll be slightly less cars there than if I stayed there, well, if I got there at like half seven, eight o'clock. No, I was due there at half eight, so. Not done myself out of much time. Alright, left of this next roundabout, and it's just down there. I probably stop outside and have a walk in, because I don't want to be pulling in and then finding out there's another truck in there making food deliveries or something. So I'll pull up outside and then have a wander in. I've been given the code for the gate as well to get in. So that'd be handy. We've got to have a, a recce first, we've got to have a quick look. Make sure everything is to m my satisfaction before trying to go in there. Lovely, I don't need to stop. Let's carry on round. Wow, this hotel was literally pretty much in the airport. <laughs> So I can't stop out here. Okay. Oh well, looks like we're gonna have to go wing it, I guess. this ago. Finally got someone to open the gate for me. <laughs> Pressing the buzzer and no one answers so it's not a lot I can do really. I've got a bus right behind me that's going to want to go in here. Um, I'm going to be able to get in there and get out that way. See a bloody fingers of the sun either. It's gonna be tricky. Nope. Try that again. She turns quick. It's been a little while since I've done any serious maneuvers with an urban trailer. I can't see a thing because of the sun. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think we're good. Bring a 
back from there. Okay, there's not too many cars in it. So I think the plan may have worked to get here a little bit later. Try and get a bit of angle on this one. Where's the curb? That sun is really not helping right now. It's like in the worst position ever. So I get to a certain point that it just flicks through the trees in your mirror. So I got the curb, don't care. <laughs> Too tight on it. Alright, in the river, start taking that off. Try not to hit the post. Quite as close, nearly had me mirror. <laughs> Actually, it's not overly bad to be fair, it's not as tight as I thought it was going to be. I've still overcooked it though. No cars there. The trials and tribulations with an urban trailer. There we go. That's better. Alright. That wasn't so bad actually. I say it's been a while since I've driven with a rear steer, so <laughs> it's like learning all over again. Back in here somewhere. This is the easy bit. Right, I'm going to stop here for a minute. I'm going to get out and go have a look. I will see you in a minute. A bit tight in here, <laughs> not too bad. We're in, bends over there. <laughs> We're in, that's the main thing. Oh dear, place we go to. Eh? Not too bad. Right, urban trailers and urban places. This is a tail lift jobby. What we gotta do, we gotta plug our Anderson lead into here. Don't forget to unplug it, otherwise uh, when you drive away you're going to rip something which is not how you want to do it. So that's powered. So I've undone these so I can undo, undo the straps from inside. And then there's the tail lift. I've already put it down and opened the door. There's your controls. Down, it's down. Up is up. So there's a little catch there we got to undo. Now I'll let it drop down. So uh, do that. And then when you want to pull it up, pull that up, and then it goes up. Like that. And then when it goes up, it locks into that bit up there. Simple as that, really. I'll put it down a bit. It's dreadfully slow. And then when you want to switch to inside controls, switch that. Oh no. Okay. It's being weird. Sometimes you have a wander lead and then you switch that and it allows you to use the wander lead, but not with this one. <laughs> Alright, got to try and get all this furniture out. I don't think I'm going to get them wardrobes out past here because the side bars are higher than the rear bar, but we'll give it a shot. Alright, let's get these in straps. I've already undone that one. Just got to undo these two. Fun times. Delivery done. I probably don't need to take this as wide, but I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, oh, not too bad actually, a little bit of handballing, a little bit of faffing around, but we got it off. There was a couple of guys there sort of maneuvering stuff. Now it's a case of whether I can get out this car park without the barrier being a pain in the backside. If not, I'll just sit there holding the air horn. <laughs> right. I think I'm going to touch. Uh, nope, we're missing.
just the curb just. Right, let's actually uh, go onto my thing and set my destination. I know where it is, I know exactly how to get there, it's just nice to know this all the time. And, uh, where are we? That's the one. Wakey wakey sat nav. There we go. Right, let's see if the people in reception will uh, pay attention to me pressing the buzzer and let, actually let me out this time. Press for assistance. Thank you. Always turn the engine off because you never know if they need to hear you or not. Alright. This car's gonna go. And let me out. Fantastic. So, turn too sharply. Minimal tail swing on this thing, but still, when you're that close to barriers and that, you don't want to be hitting them. <laughs> All right, let's loop around here and not get stuck somewhere I don't need to be, because I'll end up getting charged or told off or something. <laughs> All right, let's go around this way. Drop off, I don't want to drop off. Fame, file up way for one authorized vehicles. Ah, this could be interesting. Exit M23. Okay, this one, this one, I'll take it. That's what we want. I say, if I missed that and went straight on, <laughs> I may have been in a world of trouble. It says it's 4.1 meters up that way. I presume that's not this way. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I, I would have pretty much been uh, having to put my air down to get through that. <laughs> if I carried on by mistake. Yeah, might have upset a few people. All right, two hours 45 to the collection point. Which will put me on quite a considerable amount of hours ready already for the day. Oh, that's great, I'm not going to be able to see what's coming. I have to look in the mirror and hope for the best, I think. I need the first lane anyway, I think. This guy's coming that way. All right, I'm going. M23, M25, that's what I want. So we will continue on. Right, we're out of the danger zone now, I think. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get in the wrong lane around the airport because it'll end up costing you. Right, off to Wareham. I will see you in a few hours. Woo! We're in Wareham. We're already loaded. <laughs> I just completely forgot <coughs> to film when I uh, got near here, so... Then you've seen me come here about a million and one times anyway, recently. It's, it's like at least every video or every other video at the moment I've been coming here. That's fine, here's what it is. Anyway, I loaded up 12 pallets. They're all on, which is ideal. This is good, that's what we want. Nice and easy, like a nice easy load. It's not too bad that they just chuck it on the back door and then you uh, pump truck it to where you need to put it. So, yeah, I do already. Anyway, we're taking this back to the yard, which is an hour and six minutes away apparently. We're just gonna put some, oh, just over three. Of, wow, that was a cut and a half. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't even think Jesus would cut that much. All right. <laughs> just, it wasn't even a cut, that was just driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> oh my word, how the hell are some people, well, are still alive? It amazes me. I imagine she's the sort of person that. <sighs> the sort of person you look at and you think, how the hell do you get yourself dressed in the morning? <laughs> Madness. 
Anyway, enough about that. Prat. Right. <laughs> well, that's, that's actually left me quite speechless. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to take this all back to the yard. And then I presume this is going to come off this trailer and go onto another trailer because it's not very often we get red turn loads for the small trailers because nine times out of ten we do full standard trailer loads, so 26 pallets or large amounts of timber or bricks or stuff that needs a fully weighted trailer. So we got something to take back. This will probably end up getting put on a full size trailer, like I said, with something else and go up as a couple of drops as a multi drop day and then. Um, then someone's got a standard size trailer for collection and return load. Yeah. So no, no point sending me all the way up north if there's nothing that will go on a urban. Yeah. So I'm going to take these back to the yard and then potentially have another trailer to take out. Or it might even be a case of swapping these over onto another trailer and then taking this out. Which, to be honest, is fine. Because these are going to, one's going to, well, seven pallets are going to Lincolnshire and five pallets are going to Grimsby. Just one you've seen me film recently as well. Yeah. Yeah, so we don't know what we're doing after this. Just taking this back to the yard and then. Who knows? <laughs> That's transport. Right. I'll see you in about an hour, I guess. Back in the yard. Okay. Back in. Well, we're near Bridport. That's Bridport there. Nearly back in Chiddock. Nearly back at the yard. Find out what else we got. <sighs> Who knows? As I said, it wouldn't surprise me if some of this stuff gets transshipped onto another trailer and then with something else, and then I've got to take everything to places and things. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. So I'm on 6 hours and 50 minutes driving now, so I've only got, what, 2 hours and 10 minutes on a 9? 3 hours and 10 minutes on a 10? Nice edge cutting, man. Yeah, so I ain't got the most amount of driving time left. But that don't bother me. <sighs> Excuse me. And if I do have to take this off the road, chance I'll set that's going to take me up the M5 because of where it is. So. I could potentially get to Godano services within the time I got left on a 9. Theoretically, stretch him on a 10. We'll see. God. I hate meeting trucks along here. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. All depends on what we've got. There might be another trailer loaded up with something else for me to take, so I'll take that instead. Set the speed camera again. <laughs> oh, nope. tractor coming out of the yard. Probably my boss. <laughs> oh. ah, plenty of room to get in. Lovely. What do we like? Only got a little trailer, so I didn't quite need to take that much room, but oh well. We're in. That's the main thing. <laughs> that wasn't my boss, by the way. He's in the office. Alright, let's part this up and then figure out what we're doing. So we got the pallets I collected taken off of this trailer, put onto another trailer. I've still got the waste from my drop on, which I'm dropping off to where that's going to. And I've got some loose pallets that were put on in the yard, which I'm now taking up to where I'm doing a collection. 
and then that collection being collected and taken to a London for tomorrow, which would be tomorrow's job for me, which is a tailless jobby. So tailless job job in London, yay! <laughs> yeah, I might leave this video after collecting that and sort of stopping for the night, and then I might um, film the London job as one whole video on its own again. I might, I might sort of do the driving and drive out again and then the unloading. I might do, I might. But obviously you'll have to wait till next week to find out whether I did or not. <laughs> It'll be good to get a couple of videos ahead again because obviously I have my week off so I didn't film then. And hopefully if I do that tomorrow that will give me enough videos to cover all of January so I can have January off from filming and I can have a bit of a rest. And I won't have to worry about things. Beauty about having an urban, I can get around this really easily now. The unit still takes up enough room. But the tree is like, yeah, that was easy. Don't have to worry about the curb so much or anything like that. Just gotta worry about the car coming up behind me now. It's not quite on the roundabout yet. I guess I'm turning in here. I wonder where these cars coming down anymore. Catch up with me. I don't need quite as much room to get in here with this one. <sighs> nice and easy. Oh, I'll do like a rear steer trailer at times. Make life a lot easier. All right, let's back up and get hold of someone, and then we'll get this few little bits off. Should be able to get it all off one side, hopefully. Right, I'll see you in a bit. I'll see you after I've made my collection, actually. I can't really show you going in there, so, yeah. I'll show you when I'm done with that one. <laughs> right, we are loaded up at the usual place down here. Dom's in front of me, he's had to collect the trailer from there and he gave me a hand getting all my stuff sorted. So, I've got two drops to do in London. So I've got one which is just like some alley channel which is very very light it's quite long but very light I can literally lift it myself um, so it'd be a case of just open up the back door and drop the towel lift and carrying it off <laughs> uh, and then got another one which is 11 pallets which are all tail lift jobbies so I might do them I might do both of them as a separate video tomorrow we'll see what happens we will see what happens that'll potentially be quite a long one next week so if I do film that so all right, now we both got to try and get out of here and there's a car right in the way. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. People don't usually expect one truck coming down here, let alone two. <sighs> you got the back up, buddy. <sighs> there we go. He's figured it out. Sorted. It's easy now because he's fighting my way for me. <laughs> right, we've got two hours and 34 to get to Camberley. I don't know if I want to run quite that long tonight because uh, I don't really matter too much to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'll, I'll try and get to Camberley maybe. I don't really want to use my second 10 yet because it's only Tuesday. <laughs> what time is it? It's half past four. Start at five. I'll go till six. That's an hour. I'll go a bit longer than that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really want to start at five again. <laughs> I actually want to get some decent sleep tonight. We'll see what happens. Ooh, we'll see what happens. I can get the first sight at seven o'clock or half seven, I think it was. So I'm going to aim for that. 
and then the uh, second site doesn't really have a time limit, so we'll get there when we get there. Oh. Right, let's go now. It's only a 30 limit for cars along here, so they shouldn't be speeding up too much. <laughs> yeah, we're only light. The stuff's only alley on there. It's quite light. I could pr potentially move the pallets by myself. <laughs> That's how light they are. So, yeah. Shouldn't take too long to get them all off tomorrow. <sighs> right, so I'm going to mosey on up the road as far as I can tonight, I guess. I don't know. I was thinking maybe Bays and Stoke. Might stop there for the night, because then I'm only an hour from London then. Probably a little bit longer than the site, but we'll see. I'll leave about six and get there for seven. Might be the plan. We'll think about it. Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it here for a minute. I will see you when I stop later. Obviously, I'll give you more of what I think about the plan. So we'll go from there. You going? Yeah, you go. Right, hello, my little lovelies. We are on the A31 just outside of Ringwood. So we're just up the hill from Ringwood. The Burley turning with the shell garage services and whatever. And the Macadies. Yeah. So uh, we're going to pull into a lay-by along here somewhere. We are at 8 hours 42 minutes driving and we're also at 5.42, which is uh, just coming up on my 13 hours working day. 6 o'clock my 13 hour working day. So by the time I stop and my paperwork, it will be 13 hours roughly. So we're going to try and slip into one of the lay-bys along here. Hopefully I've got a good phone signal here because I'd like to play a game. I'm playing a game at the moment called Seven Days to Die. It's great. It's a horror survival game where every seven days you get a horde of zombies come and attack you and you've got to defend yourself. Uh, so they walk during the day and run during the night. Check it out. It's a great game. Yeah. So if I ain't got a good signal then I won't be playing it. I'll run a little server for me and my friends to play on so that'll be fun. So if I ain't got a signal I won't be playing. I'll be ed editing this video instead. Yeah, so we're going to put it in it. No, for the best. It shouldn't be too bad because it's uh, still relatively early. Let's get over this side. Oh, these cameras here, look. Could put it over the other side, but it's a bit quieter over this side. There we go. Beauty about rear steer is it does pull in a lot tighter. I can get right up against the bank there, out of the way. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to leave this video here. I'm going to stop up here for the night. Alright, now we're off the uh, road and then lay by. Do that. Oh, we've got reasonable signal. We might be right for the night. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to stop here for the night. Do my paperwork in a minute. And crack on the London tomorrow to do these two little drops. So I'm thinking I might film tomorrow. A separate video so it'll be next week's video so I might go to the first drop in the morning and then I'll film from there to the next drop and then film from the that drop out of side of the M25 so that could potentially happen if it don't happen well you find out next week wouldn't you because it'll, it'll be something to do with London <laughs> so you might have that look forward to you might not all depends what happens but yeah so yeah stopping in New Forest again lovely <coughs> Gonna raise my suspension up a little bit. Actually, I don't know. I think we're fairly level. Not too bad. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would say I think it's gonna be a short one, than usual, because sometimes they turn out like that. But then when I say that, it turns out not be that short anyway. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna get out and have a check of the vehicle in a minute. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, a thumbs down. That is entirely up to you. I don't mind either way. Also, uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. It doesn't cost nothing. Uh, also you can hit the little bell icon and give you a notification when my videos are released but if you don't want to do that then my videos are released at 6pm every Monday hopefully I've got enough footage now that I, you won't miss anything through January when I have a month off so yeah um, also share my video with someone you think might like it or for someone you think not that won't like it to watch it anyway and uh, leave a comment what do you think of my reverse? good? did I do alright? <laughs> yeah, never mind. Alright, take it easy, look after yourselves, drive safely. Thanks for trucking around with Drono, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbyes!